studying the very landscapes that we love for their rustic beauty, Dr. Andrew Baxter is as fascinating as his subjects. At the peak of his academic career, he started an outdoor clothing brand from his garage, grew it into a household name, and now he's become a renowned photographer. Hi, I'm Andrew Baxter. I'm the CEO of West Other Wildlife and Environment Society of South Africa. I've had a career in conservation for nearly 30 years, and it all started uh, not too far away from here at UCT, where I studied to become a, a paleoecologist. Paleoecology uh, is really the science of looking at, at large landscapes over long periods of time. So it tells us about the ecological uh, shifts that happen over periods of time in response to climate change. But as my, my career has progressed uh, and my interest has changed, I've become far more interested in the small detail and in, in, in the intricacies of, of the natural environment. And that brings me to Kirstenbosch, my happy space, where I now spend as much free time as possible taking photographs of flowers and, and looking for spiders. Feinbos may be the smallest of the world's six floral kingdoms, but there is a whole universe to discover within it. And my journey as a photographer started when I was six years old and received my first little box camera, black and white film. You look down uh, and, and you never saw your results until weeks later. Um, but I've always enjoyed photography, uh, mostly uh, consider myself a, a landscape photographer, you know, again, looking at the, the big picture, wide open landscapes and mountains. But lockdown brought a different perspective and an opportunity for me, and my, my world was constrained. And I used to come to Kirsten Wash Gardens regularly and uh, developed an interest in macro photography and, and portrait photography of flowers. And so that's opened up a, a different genre for me. And I, I, I like the variability. So what I'm looking for with my floristic fireworks pictures is a, a very bright colored flower like this, this stunning aloe and a dark background so that there's a strong contrast between the image of the flower and, and there's very little detail in the background. Yeah, so I mean, Kirstenbosch Gardens is just an incredible collection of the, the most uh, remarkable flowers from, from the Fambos and, and further afield. But I, I particularly love the proteas, especially the, the Lucas Bermans. Uh, the pin cushions um, uh, because I love to photograph them. Right, so here we've got, uh, we've got a pin cushion. It's late in the season, but this is a, a beautiful yellow cuneiform leucospermum with these bright inflorescences, which is exactly what we're looking for. That bright color contrasted against a dark background is going to make an absolutely awesome picture. Ask Andrew what's unique about himself and being the scientist that he is, he says, only my DNA. It's his passion for his subject that is uniquely infectious. Once I've taken the picture and, and brought it home, then what I do is I pop it into Lightroom uh, and, and I tease out the, the colors of the, of the flowers, adding a little bit of light in and keep the shadows suppressed. So it's very minor editing. There's no Photoshopping and there's no layers. I, I don't even know how to do that stuff. So it's just, a, it's about playing with the contrasts and just bringing a little bit of light onto the subject. And that's it. My photography is really an attempt to display what I believe is um, profound and important about the natural world. Um, I like to show the pretty things and I like to show the not so pretty things. But it is an opportunity for me to convey that message around why it's important to protect nature. Andrew's clarity of focus and humility about his art certainly has something to do with having survived cancer, raised three children, and seeing his work from a global perspective. I've been taking pictures all my life, but floristic fireworks have, have really surprised me because um, they seem to have been well accepted by people who have shared them and they've gone all around the world on social media. And the response has been really positive, and I guess because they could be pretty pictures, but also I think the notion of floristic fireworks, floral fireworks, natural fireworks, as opposed to traditional fireworks, uh, has, has, has got people thinking, and, and that's why they've been shared. And if my photography achieves one thing, and, uh, and it gets people to, to question um, you know, what nature versus uh, conventional fireworks, well then, then I think I've accomplished something. My view is that we need to start with children. We've, we've got to provide an, an opportunity for children to reconnect with nature. We've got to provide uh, opportunities to get out into the wilderness, to educate kids, to show them their place in nature and to bring them closer, to get them excited about nature and passionate about the natural world. That's the only way we're going to conserve natural spaces and wildlife in the future.
If this project's taught me anything, it's to slow down, not to hurry past, but to stop and smell the roses, have a look at the flowers in, a, in a, from a different perspective, and to appreciate the beauty of nature. And that appreciation of nature is an inspiration for almost every creative impulse we have. Get more of the Insider Essay online. Follow, connect, engage, and be inspired to live better with the Insider Essay. Watch the show Monday evenings at 5.30. Repeat Saturday at 1 on S3.